Johannes Wilhelm Jensen was a Danish writer and Nobel laureate. He was born in 1873 in Paris, the son of veterinary surgeon Hans Jensen and Marie Kirsten Jensen. He studied medicine at the University of Copenhagen for three years before switching to a literary career. Between 1900 and 1901 he published The Fall of the King, which was declared the best Danish novel of the 20th century by several newspapers in 1999. In 1904 he married Elsa Marie Ulrich. In 1944 he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. He died in Copenhagen in 1950. Today we will cover the second part, though published first chronologically, of his The Long Journey, a series of six novels published between 1908 and 1922, being the glacier. The book is divided in two parts. The first concerns Dreng, the rebellious firekeeper of a small tribe living in a tropical forest who are forced further and further south by the dipping climate. One day Dreng is separated from his tribe, and after getting back to them they all curse him for letting the fire go out, and even his closest friend threatens him with death if he should ever come back. Life in the forest is getting more and more drab, as herds of animals either leave or freeze to death, Dreng finding some small amusement when he finds their bodies, like when he sees a whole group of apes huddled together frozen to death in a tropical forest. Soon the very first winter comes and Dreng without fire lives an utterly bestial existence, forced to fight every single day to just keep himself alive and not even knowing why he does so. He climbs the high mountains, wanting to fight the being that made winter exist and beat its face in. But when he sees even the old volcano where he would replenish his fires frozen and dead, he loses hope anything will ever get better for him. Dreng then gets into the habit of eating other people, taking perverse glee in their day's long pursuit. One day he finds another person he would like to eat, but after chasing them for days on end to the edge of the ocean, he finds it is a woman and does not. Dreng and Moa make a home in a cave and have many children but Dreng is obsessed with the idea of making fire out of stones. And so he spends many years shut up in his cave smashing rocks together until everyone thinks he's mad and eventually discovers Flint. And in doing so he has a vision of modern day Chicago and then of going through the forest where the ground is made of flesh, rivers are blood encircled by monstrous teeth and trees are made of pulsating flesh covered in eyes. This being how Dreng's descendants on the glacier got a hold of fire while the old man crawled into a cave one day and sitting under the stars never left it. But for some reason the book continues, this being only the halfway point. The story jumps ahead several thousand years and focuses on Hidbjorn, one of the folk living on the glacier and all descended from the now god adjacent Dreng. In his time the art of keeping fires kept secret by the descendants of Dreng's firstborn son Garm, making for a ruling class. Now one day Hidbjorn would marry Var, but the Garm priest wants her for himself, so he sends him on an impossible errand to kill the giant monstrous rhinoceros that roams the glacier and has killed anyone who has come across it. But when he does just that, the priest says he was only joking and that Hvidbjörn actually deserves to be punished for his hubris. So Hvidbjörn kills one of the Garm priests and takes Var anyway. The two live a miserable life without fire, but Hvidbjörn is kept busy by taming moose and inventing ships, while Var accidentally discovers farming. When their home is near flooded away in the melting of the glacier, the family sets off to the south, to what they call Livland. The locals welcome them at first but soon grow to hate Vidibjorn for daring to presume to ride around in wagons as if his feet weren't good enough for walking anymore, and so they murder his wife, kill her infant daughter and slowly torture his youngest son to death. He kills many of them with his hammer but then builds himself a new ship and sails away. The second part did not make me as invested, as most of it is about Vidibjorn inventing things, and the story doesn't seem to know when to stop but the first part is rather good. Mind you, that whole secret of the flint thing is brought up but is never important to the actual plot. 